In this presentation, you will learn how to create a free body diagram for moving objects. A free body diagram is a drawing that shows all the forces acting on an object. Physicists make free body diagrams to solve problems or to find an unknown force. Let's do a free body diagram for a falling sphere accelerating downward. There is a downward force of gravity and an upward force of friction. Since we are told that the body is accelerating downward, we must make the downward force greater than the upward force. Before we go any further, I want to review the term normal force. The upward force that supports an object is called the normal force. In the example you see here, the chair provides the normal force on the man. A normal force is always drawn perpendicular to the surface where the two objects meet. When the object is placed on a horizontal surface, the normal force equals the weight force. When an object is placed on a ramp, the normal force is less than the weight force. What are the forces on the box sliding up a ramp? The box has a weight force pointing straight down. The ramp exerts a supporting force on the box. This is called the normal force. The last force on the box is friction. Since the block is sliding up the ramp, the friction force is parallel to the ramp and it points in the opposite direction of the box's motion. Now we're going to do a free body diagram for a box being pulled to the right with constant velocity. What is the force on the body that's also acting on you now? That force, of course, is gravity. This vector is drawn from the center of the box and it points straight down. Next we will draw the normal force. The normal force is the upward supporting force of the floor on the box. Notice that the normal force is equal to the weight force because the box is moving on a horizontal surface. We are told that the box is being pulled to the right. This is called the applied force. The last force we need to draw is the friction force. Since we are told that the box is being pulled with a constant velocity, we can conclude that the acceleration is equal to zero. This means that the net force on the body is also zero. Therefore, the friction force is equal to the applied force. Here's the tough part for a lot of people. They look at this and they say, if the force is a balance, why does the box move? Newton explained that net forces are needed to change motion, but a net force is not needed to maintain motion. All these cars are moving to the right. Which cars are speeding up? Which are slowing down? And which have a constant velocity? Well, car one is speeding up because the forward force is greater than the backward force. Car two is slowing down because the backward force is greater than the forward force. And cars three and four both have constant velocity because their forces are balanced. When the forces on an object are balanced, the acceleration is zero and they don't change their velocity. Now we're going to do a free body diagram for a baseball after it leaves a bat. Of course there's a weight force that points straight down, and since the ball is moving very fast, there's a significant friction force on it. The friction force is drawn in a direction that's exactly opposite to the ball's motion. Now you might be wondering how the ball is able to move forward if there's no forward force on the ball. Some, some actually mistakenly think that there should be an arrow on the ball that represents the bat's force on the ball. Galileo and Newton would explain that an object in motion does not require a force to stay in motion. A net force is needed to change motion, not to maintain motion. Which plot would represent a body moving with a net force equal to zero? A net force of zero means the object is either at rest or moving with constant velocity. Since the body is moving, we need to pick the two graphs that show constant velocity. 
In this presentation, you'll learn that when an object is moving with constant velocity, the net force on the body equals zero, and that the applied force equals the friction force. You also learn that the friction on a sliding body always points in the direction opposite to the object's motion. This is the end of part two of free body diagrams.